Okay, hi. So I did a video, I don't know, a month or so ago about like authors that I love that I want to read more of where I read a book by them and I was like, I love this. I want to see more from them, but I'm like scared to read them because like the book I liked by them first was so good. Now we're going to do the opposite where we talk about books or we talk about authors that I read a book from that I didn't really get along with, but I'm gonna try another one from them. So it's kind of like a second chance scenario here. I may think of a book and reading a book by a new author as like a date with their style. Like my reading taste meets their style. And you know, sometimes you go on that first date and, you know, like, you're, they're not getting another. Like, that's it. Like, no intrigue. We're one and done. Then you get books sometimes where it's like, well, there was something going for it, but, like, it's not, it wasn't totally my jam, but I'm willing to, like, try them out again. That's the books that we're going to be talking about today. So I have a list. And some of these books, or some of these authors, I finished the whole book, and I felt neutral, or I kind of disliked it, but there was something that kept me intrigued, and others I DNF'd, but I want to try again with them. Like, we're not, we're not done yet. Um, and obviously not all books. This is the time you want to sit on my lap? No, you just want to sniff me because I'm making noise. Oh no, you do want to get on my lap. You kind of want to get on my lap. Okay, you're going to sit on my lap and not lay on my lap. Are you going to make a decision, baby? No. Okay. I don't remember what I was saying before I got distracted by my cat. Before we get started, I would like you guys to convince me in the comments one way or another, like, should I or should I not? So first off, okay, we have Essie Adugan. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Essie Adugan. Uh, so she wrote Washington Black, which was kind of all around booktube a few years ago when it got long-listed or short-listed for an award. Do I have? I don't have it where I can grab it. It's up there. So this is the one that I feel like I had the most mixed experience with because it's really a book in four parts and I loved the first part. I loved where it was going. It seemed so interesting. I was intrigued and then the pacing was just wild. It was all over the place. We were jumping time and life and I liked it and I wanted to love it and I was frustrated by how I wasn't like loving it. Like I just kept having qualms with how things were moving forward. And so that's why this is on this list. And Essie Adugian is on this list because like she, I feel like if it were a different book with a different pace, but still had like the same intrigue level, I would be sold. Okay. Next one on the list, Jesse Burton. This author is well liked in a lot of circles of booktube. And I read The Muse. And I didn't get it. Like, not, I didn't get the book. I get, I got the book. I didn't get why people liked the book. It was a book in two timelines. And I wasn't all that intrigued by the character development and the character stories happening. Um, and then there was a way that the two plot lines connected, which I figured out within like, 20 pages. I was like, oh, okay, this is how they're going to connect. You kept jumping between the two timelines, and it seemed like you weren't supposed to know how the two were connected, but I thought it was fairly obvious how the two were connected. So there was like what I assumed to be this like tension you were supposed to be feeling as a reader that was supposed to drive the narrative forward. And because I thought it was pretty obvious what was going to happen. I wasn't have I wasn't feeling that. So I I kept reading. This is really before I like 
got like a lot more into DNFing books, um, I kept feeling like it was going to get better. I was like, there must be something. There must be something that's going to happen that's going to reel me back in. But there wasn't. Um, it ended and I was like, oh, it ended. That's what I thought. Okay, cool. Um, and so I have a specific book in mind for this. I don't know if it's come out yet or if it's going to come out, but Jesse Burton is doing a Medusa retelling, and I think it might just be called Medusa, and that's the one I want to read because I'm more, much more intrigued by the um, plot. So I think hopefully I'll be able to appreciate the writing and all of that more. Number three, Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Earlier this year, I read Mexican Gothic, and Again, all over booktube. Like, people were so intrigued. They were like, it's so atmospheric. It's so original. It's unlike anything I ever read. It's creepy. Um, and it was really just like a fine experience for me. The premise, there's certain authors like this, and I don't know if she's one of them, where the premise of their books is really interesting, but the execution leaves something to be desired. So it's like, you always get intrigued by their book. You're like, oh, they're coming out with a new book, and that sounds so cool. And then you read it, and you're like, I'm getting tricked again. This is just like the last one. I don't know if she is that author, um, but I'm going to find out. So I had another one of her books on my TBR. I'll put it up here. This was the one I was originally going to read, and then Mexican Gothics got so much hype that I chose to read Mexican Gothics first. Gods of Shade and Jaden. Gods of Jade and Shadow? Gods of Shade and Shadow. It'll be here. <laughs> um, so that's the one that I am planning on reading by her at a point in the future. Moving on. He to Jelly Clark. Now, I didn't dislike this book, and I didn't dislike some of the books on this list, because if I totally hated them, they wouldn't be on this list. I'm very much fine with being like, yeah, I'm never going to read this author again. Like, I have a few like that. Where we're just like, they come out with another book. I'm not fooled. Not happening. We're not jumping on that train again. Mm -mm. Nope. Anyway. I read... Oh my goodness. Which book did I read by P. Jelly Clark? I read this book. I don't know why I can't think of the name right now, and my phone is dead next to me, and I have a cat in my lap, so I can't get any, uh, can't find the info. Um, but it was, again, interesting. Found the plot line very interesting. I don't know if it was when I read it, um, but I just felt very detached from the reading experience, where I felt like I was being, I was at an arm's length. Like, I was at an arm's length from everything that was happening. So while I was, like, respecting the book itself for what it was doing, and I liked, like, points and ideas that were in the book, I didn't necessarily enjoy my experience. And this is, again, a, an author where this wasn't the original book by them I was planning on reading. I was going to read The Black Drum. I was going to read this one first. That was the one I had heard about originally, but then Ring Shout. That's what it is. Ring Shout was getting a lot of hype, and the plot sounded very interesting. Again, this author's plot all sound very interesting. So then I, I changed my mind, and I am going to try another book. Their books are all, like, very short, so I should be able to fit that in at some point. None of these are priorities, too. I'm just going to say that. Like, none of these reads are priority reads. It's just, like, I'm intrigued. Like, maybe we'll have a second date at some point in the future. I'm really pushing this metaphor. Next, we have River Solomon. Again, a book I didn't necessarily dislike. And, you know, this experience was very similar to my one with Ring Shout, where the premise was really interesting, I was seeing a lot of intrigue about it. I, I Conceptually, I liked it. I liked the points it was making. I liked what was happening in the narrative as I was reading it. However, again, I felt at an arm's length from everything that was going on. I, I didn't ever feel super connected to the plot. 
um, or a, the characters, I guess. Maybe it's a character connection that I was missing from those two, where I, I, I didn't, get, maybe I didn't, I don't understand character motivations, or I don't feel like I'm deep enough in their head, or something like that. But the plot itself is intriguing. So I do want to read another book by River Solomon. There's Sorrowland, which I've seen, and then there is another one that they've written. You can tell I didn't take notes. Um, that is older. That was, again, one that I was originally planning on reading, but then this one was getting hype all over the place. So then I read this one instead. And maybe I am learning that I shouldn't do that. I should just go with my gut and read the original one I was planning on reading by an author. Hmm. This one I might read in the nearer future. Next we have Melissa Broder. So I read The Pisces. And again, I didn't hate the book. I hated the main character. She was a nightmare of a human and uh, couldn't empathize. I love unlikable protagonists. I think it's so fun to read a book where the, you just, you really don't like the protagonist. They're not necessarily a good person. Uh, I like being in their heads. I like seeing, I guess, meaner thoughts on the page. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> I'm like, I get along with these unlikable uh, characters. But I didn't like this character. Um, it was weird to me. I, like, I didn't relate. This, the, main, the protagonist is like in her 40s, hasn't gotten her life together, can't even take care of a dog. Like, there is harm to a dog in this book, which I, was, I wasn't uh, a fan of. And, well, neglect of a dog, I should say. It, but it was weird, like, she's, like, has a thing with a fish, with merman, fish guy. Uh, but, I, yeah, I hated her, and but I was still intrigued by the writing. And there is, she, Melissa Broder, her, Broder has a book out called Milk Fed, which um, I think I've seen, like, maybe marginally better reviews for, but she is just a very polarizing author. And I'd like to read another polarizing book. And if neither of those work for me, I could probably safely assume at that point that, like, we're done. That's it. I feel like these are a lot of booktube darlings. Um, okay, another one is Sarah Moss. So I read Ghost Wall a few years ago. And again, I feel like I'm a broken record with these. The plot was interesting sounding. You know, I was very intrigued by what was happening dynamically, but I just wasn't connecting. And right after, while I was reading this, I was kind of like teetering into a reading slump. So that might be part of the problem with her because I've also read or watched a lot of videos of people whose reading tastes I have a lot of similarities with really liking Ghost Walls. So I'm like, maybe it was just me in this situation, but I don't think I would want to reread Ghost Wall. I think I would want to go on to her nonfiction about Iceland. I think her time in Iceland. And then maybe pick back up into her fiction uh, if I enjoy her nonfiction. Because that's dynamically completely different. And I think the same author can, you can maybe appreciate their nonfiction and not like their fiction. So I'm going to go into her nonfiction next. Okay. And then we have Marlon James. So again, another situation where I was planning on reading one book and then I read another one instead. So I was originally planning on starting with A Brief History of Seven Killings. And then his Black, black Leopard, Red Wolf, Red Wolf, Black Leopard, I'll, I'll have it up. Um, that came out and it was, again, getting so much hype and I was sucked in and I read it and I pushed myself through that book. Pre, pre-L DNFing queen. Um, I pushed myself through that read and it was one of the most painful reading experiences I've ever had. Like, not in the sense that I was hate reading it, but I, his writing style in that book is very off-putting, in my opinion. Uh, some people might be able to fall into it. I was like, okay, it's like a 600-page book. 
And like the 200 page mark, I'm going to fall into this. Like I'm going to get into the flow. I'm going to like find my place and I'm just going to fall into the writing style. Never happened. I never felt like comfortable in the writing style, which was a very bizarre experience for me. And plot wise, I just felt like it left like a whole bunch to be desired. Uh, it was following a lot of tropes. I didn't like the choice of ha of perspective of the narrative and it just kind of felt like it didn't work at all it, it it just the package didn't come together well for me but i have heard such good things about a brief history of seven killings that i feel like i still want to try it but that one if i do not fall into the writing style relatively quickly I will DNF it. Um, but I am, I still am intrigued. I still, where is it? I still own the book. Oh no, you can't see it. I still own the book. So we'll try that one. That one's the one I'm like most skeptical, skeptical about, especially because it's, again, a 600 page book. I'm going to talk about some, the authors that I have, I DNF'd. So starting off. Helen Oyeyemi. I tried What's Not Yours Is Not Yours earlier this year, which is like connected short stories, which is usually my vibe. I like connected short stories, but they, by the, I think I got midway into the third story. They were all really long, which isn't my vibe. I don't like long short stories. I typically like shorter ones, like 30 pages. Um, and these ones were like 50 to 60 pages, so it, they just kind of felt like they dragged, and there was something very mundane about all of them, and they were all connecting around interesting concepts, where I was like, I see you, I see what you're trying to do, but in this particular instance, it's not working for me. And so I own Mr. Fox which is what I'm going to try to read next. The last one is also a DNF. And I DNF this book at about the 80% mark. And it is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I rarely get that far into a book. I was going to say this is the farthest I've ever gotten into a book and DNF'd it, but that's absolutely not true. I DNF The Devil in the White City at like over 90% because I just like couldn't care less. But yeah, I was I was very far into this book at the point of DNFing. And again, I was teetering on a reading slump when I was reading this and I wasn't connecting to the writing style. Uh, there was something about it where I would just kind of like glaze over as I was reading it and I wasn't really like the sentences weren't like going into my brain and settling there which is interesting to say because I DNF this about a year ago and I think about this book often um I can remember very specific moments in this book and so and and normally I read a book and it's gone like <laughs> some people have really great memories I read a book and within two weeks, I don't remember a lot of the book. I'm, I don't know. Um, I don't have the greatest memory, I guess. But this one's kind of like stuck with me. And again, I am a person on repeat. Hey, this is another situation where I was not planning on reading this book first. I was planning on reading Mapping the Interior. And I had had that on my TBR for quite a number of years. But again, Booktube got me with the freaking hype, and The Only Good Indians was everywhere, and I was like, well, everyone's loving this book, so this is the one I should start with, and, um, and then I DNF'd it. So I am intrigued. Stephen Graham Jones, again, 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 again. Interesting plots. All of the, I feel like all of these authors, for the most part, had really intriguing plots, and it was the execution that I wasn't a huge fan of or I wasn't super attached to the characters, but I'm coming back to them because their ideas are interesting. Whereas there's other authors that I read, and it's just like, eh, that book was okay, 
but they weren't do they the, the idea of the the concept of the book at its core and the concept of their books generally at their core aren't super intriguing I just know I'll never go back to them like there's no I have no interest like they're just like I said before like they're gone like they're gone from my head last one is Stephen Graham Jones and I think I'm gonna go I've, I've looked more into his backlist and I have a better sense of his books at this point and I I think I'm going to start with mapping the interior. And I might, in fact, if I like that experience, go back and finish The Only Good Indians. That's the video. Let me know in the comments if you read any of these authors and convince me one way or another if I should actually read them. And that is all I got. So until next time, happy reading. <laughs>